are you? I am well. How are you? I am amazing, amazing. So I am actually live. I was about to go on live and say we were going to reschedule, but let me do a quick introduction right quick. Okay. It's your girl, Latani Rochelle, y'all. And this is our first episode of Stamps, where we actually talk to different celebrities and we give them the opportunity to show that they're human, that they actually have true spirits and true souls. And we have to remember, they have feelings too. And they are people too. Our first guest is the lovely Miss Vivian Green. How are you, beautiful? I am well. How are you? I am amazing. I am yeah, amazing. I want to apologize because whatever my last interview just ran a couple minutes over. I've been doing back to back all day, so you know sometimes they run into each other. I'm sorry. You know you're good. You're good. I'm just glad that you showed up. So yeah. I, so I know I only have you for a short period of time. So let's let's talk about something very significant. You have new music out. Yes. Yes. Well, it's Friday. It's out Friday. Yeah, it's the 13th. Yep. Friday it's the 13th. Friday the 13th. That's a good thing. You know, people always say that's a bad thing, but good things always happen to me on Friday the 13th. So, oh, really? yes. All, sure, all, all my life. Friday, all my life. I promise you. I look forward to Friday the 13th. So, that's a good day. Okay. All right. I'm going to change it all the way around. Yeah. And guess uh, what? You're talking about love. So, how can you go wrong? There you go. You're right. I love, I love your positive your positivity toward it. I'm gonna take some of that for me. <laughs> We're gonna say so. The new album is called Love Absolute. Yeah, it's called Love Absolute. There it is. Hey, let me tell you something. You looking funky. You looking so good and so just refreshed and oh, I love thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So Love Absolute. It's um, my seventh studio album. It drops Friday, November 13th. I love it so very much. And it encompasses it encompasses lots of things that I love. And that's why I called it Love Absolute. <laughs> so can we? Okay, so so we know we, we've are, we're already in love with you. You know, I, when I put up your flyer, people went crazy. Like, oh, I love her and everything and stuff. So I need you to understand and know that you have some true fans out here who already love and appreciate you. And we are excited about your new music. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but, you know, I, you know, when I decided to create stamps, it's because I'm always doing like red, red carpet interviews and interviewing different celebrities. And you all, some of you guys say the same thing. It's like we're humans. You know, we have feelings, too, and stuff. And I, and I wanted to. I was reading something that you said was you said. I feel liberated to explore what's in my head without a spotlight, judgment, or criticism. And mm -hmm. that's why it was important for me to have you as my first person on stamp, because that right there goes along with the importance of stamps and people understanding, you know, your music is real to you. Yeah, yeah, it really, really is. Um, so, and, and thank you. I, I really appreciate it. I um, appreciate your words. So the all of the ballads and mid tempos on love absolute were made at the piano and it was an intentional thing that i did because that goes back to the genesis of me writing songs that's how it all started when i was a, a tween of about 11 uh at the piano writing writing songs that way and i was just by myself and i would come up i mean i've written so many songs that way it's 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 insane that I allowed my entrance into the music business to somehow stray from that. You just kind of get into, yeah, yeah. you know, producers are submitting, you know, tracks and, stuff and you write for them and you kind of just get into that. And I, 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 don't, I had like this epiphany um, a couple years ago, like I, I never made a point to just write the whole thing at the piano and have them write it, you know? And so, that's what makes this album completely different from all the other ones because while there might be like a song here, a song there that was, you know, started at the piano, it was never like an entire project. So that makes it so different. There's some, there's a certain magic that I think happens when I write that way. And and like you said, like it's I'm alone by myself, it's no second opinion. I'm just figuring out what's in my head and how to get it out with my voice in the piano. And it's just some it's like a, it's some organic it's an organic magic that happens. And I, I wanted to capture that on this album. And it is my absolute favorite way to write a song. 
So that's one of the reasons we love Absolute. So you're actually kind of sharing your journal with us. Um, I, I guess so. Yeah. In, in a way. The fact that I don't write any of it down. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But you write songs to it. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I love the fact that you use the words organic and magic and everything and stuff, because that just means that it's, you know, it's coming purely from you and you're taking a chance yeah. on you. Exactly. And that's important. That's important. Exactly. And let someone compose around that opposed to me, you know, writing around with someone else. Because I mean, I've done that so much. I, I wanted to do it differently this time. And it's not so different to, to, to me, you know, mm -hmm. but it's different for my fans to experience something like that. That's consistent. I've never done it with an album before, with a whole album before. Yeah. And that's, uh, again, that's with the exception of the up tempos because I always give uh, Kwame the total freedom to to do that because that's his lane and that's where he lives and shines. So I leave those alone and let him. <laughs> so do you think um, out of all the all the music that you've created, do you think this is probably going to be one of your best because you're tr truly giving yourself? Absolutely, it is definitely. Um, I mean, it's definitely <laughs> that uh, we've had. This is our third album together. And it's definitely the best out of, out, of, out, of, out of the three, I think. And I think it's just one of the best overall. It, it just shows so much growth, so much, oh gosh, it's, it's so it's, it's so relevant to who I am now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if I can ever have like, well, there's a lot of reasons that my first album isn't my favorite album. Uh, many, many reasons. But one of those is that it's not representative of who I am now as a grown person. Like most of those songs I wrote when I was 20 years old and I have not related to them or it at all, you know? So, um, so, so yeah, this, this album is just a great representation of, of, of me now, um, my perspective now, you know, being a mature person, um, and, and, and like, and like I already talked about going back to that organic way of songwriting, um, being versatile and this, um, but making it all make sense cohesively, just the same. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really, really have to say. I like that. So you have some good um, uh, writers with you. Um, guest artists on your songs on this album too, huh? Um, well, no, they're no writer. Well, only Quam and I, we're the only writers. Um, okay. Yeah. Ghostface. Ghostface. Uh, the feature. The feature. Michael, who is an incredible saxophonist, played on Harlem Blues, which is a song that I wanted to cover forever. <laughs> um, yeah, it's he just Mike Phillips did a fantastic job, and so did Ghostface. So, really excited for people to hear your son, too. Did I read that correctly? Yeah, he has an interlude. There's an interlude that he's in. <laughs> okay, okay, how old is he? 16. 16. Okay, I usually okay. make put him on most um, albums that since he's been old enough to be on one. So he's usually, he pops up somewhere usually. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So and let me ask you a quick question. Mm -hmm. The old you, the new you, mm -hmm. what do you like the most about yourself now? Um, wow. <laughs> That's a big one. Huh? Um, like most about myself now. Um, my gosh. What, what, okay, so was it what to get to where you are now? Because you've you, you've come a long way and stuff. Was it a was it a hard journey? Did you have to do some self checking? You know what I mean, and really pour into yourself and you know become the the fabulous person that you are, or was it like an easy road? Um, I don't, I don't know if anybody's, you know, road to really growing up is, is easy. You know, I think the, me now, I'm just more in control of, of, of me and of the things that I allowed to happen to me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, I don't overextend myself to anyone. And which is something I definitely did as a younger person. I don't really care what anybody 
thinks, especially if it's, you know, negative. I don't let that bother me. Um, I am, I know who is in my corner and who isn't. And I don't pretend to have, you know, a million super close friends because it's a cool thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, my right. Dad, dad, time ago, you get one, maybe two tops in your life that are really right with you. And I have to say he's been right about that, um, you know, outside of my, my siblings and, and, and maybe some family. But um, I, I know that and I'm okay with that. You know, right. I don't have to try to be close friends with everybody that I meet. I think there was a point in my life where I'm like, oh, I, I like trying to keep in touch. And then, and then you kind of don't. And then it's like, it's weird. And, you know, and then you again overextend yourself and, and then people don't appreciate it. So I think all of those things I, I, I have um, definitely, I have to say, overcome. And not that they were bad things, but you can't allow yourself to be vulnerable to anyone. And in my younger years, I was probably just too nice, you know, without boundaries. Right. I mean, to have those boundaries to really, you know, balance us out. And so I think that's what I love most about myself now is that I'm still forgiving all the things, but I very seriously as well. And I think every mature woman needs to have those. <laughs> right, right. And I think that you just probably helped out of a lot of people with what you just said. You know, I think you just really truly inspired some people and didn't even know that you was doing it because you were just talking about yourself. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think I was. <laughs> I see, exactly. And that's why this show is important because, you know, you're just talking, but you know, a lot of people are listening to you and they admire you and they could be going through something so deep or so important. But the things that you just said is going to inspire them and encourage them. Well, I hope so. <laughs> so tell us what your favorite song on the album is. Um, I don't have a favorite, but I can name a couple. Okay. So there's um, Where You Are, which is one of the instant grad tracks. There is That Kind of Pain. Okay. Uh, uh, that Kind of Pain. pain. Touches on past pain that I never want to experience again or feel again. And my, my last album was called VG6, and while it was it was perfect in so many ways, but it wasn't vulnerable enough, or maybe even at all. And I, I didn't even realize that I was my point of view was so strong that people wouldn't connect to it, you know. Um, and I, so I made a point this time with Love Absolute to make sure it was very, very vulnerable. And even though I may not be going through, you know, hurt uh, at this time in my life, it's always important to go through and with it. So that kind of pain is is for whoever's going through it or whoever feels like I feel. I never want to go through that again. And it kind of goes through goes through that journey of of what happened, but but from this perspective. And Harlem Blues, like I said, I always wanted to cover that song since I was a little girl. And it's definitely one of my favorites on the album. And then there's another song called uh, We Are Everywhere that is about the um, diaspora as a result of the transatlantic slave trade. And all oh. that we are, because I feel like we, 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 we focus so much on where where we are here in the United States and all of our issues here and you know social justice here and things we go through here and you know black people who are descendants of the triangle trade um, are in so many other places and each place has its respective struggle and you know but still we connect to all those people it's very important for us to know that and not feel like our struggle is the only struggle. <laughs> and I think we can up in that a, a lot. When, um, you know, 40% of all the slaves went to Brazil. So how about that? <laughs> right, right, right. We don't, but you know what? We, we laugh. So I, I talk about that and I, I really love that song. It has like a fun um, Afrobeat vibe, but Kwame always puts his twist on 
on it. And I just, I really love it. I really love it. So that's the song that Jordan has the interlude in. Okay. So we have to be sure we check that out. Yeah, we are everywhere. Quick message. What's the message that you want to get out to our people? What's the message that you, I mean, you kind of just gave it. Um, <laughs> how we take things for granted, but I mean, if you, mm -hmm. is there anything else that you would like to add, you know, to just, uh, to, to lift us up, to, to maybe put something in the air with positivity or motivation or something? No, I, I, I think we can still stand. I, I, it's getting better for sure. But I think we could still stand to love each other more and unite even more. There is still so much division. Um, and a lot of that division um, is gener generational curses, honestly, you know, just continuing and we're not breaking those cycles. And I, I think uniting together is is the best thing, and really loving on each other and really supporting each other genuine, genuinely is can do so much, you know. And I think, like I said, I think it's it, there's something beautiful that that we have going on now. I just hope, like, part of me is like afraid, like, is this just a trend, you know? Because this kind of happened in the late '90s. Right, <laughs> right. Then, me too. Everybody just went back to sleep. Or right. I don't know what happened, but like it would be nice if this can just continue and stop being a trend or something cool to do. And you know, I I make it a point like on my social media pages, I don't like to get caught up in those kinds of trends right. because I I just I don't I don't I don't like it, you know. I want it to be real and, and authentic, you know. So I try to stay away from certain um I don't know, certain hashtags. Like, it's like, I don't want to do it because it's a hashtag. I want to do it just because I want to do it. You know what I'm right. saying? It's real. Right, right. Yeah. I need to support my businesses because that's what I do, not because they're telling me to do it. Right. Right. Exactly. right. I, I feel like you are with me totally on this answer. Oh, 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 <laughs> best friend. We cool, right? right. <laughs> okay, I'm like, yes, say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so that, that's how okay. you know. I hope this is something that's going to stay and it's not a trend and we're going to stay here and keep everything we have going, um, continuing into the future and onto the next generation um, and, and really, really, really see change, you know? So that's what I'm hoping for. I think, I think change always starts within. So, you know, and, 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 and in this respect, that would be within our people, you know, we, we, we got to get ourselves together. Yeah. We, um, we, like said, yeah. we're on our way and, and I love it, but I just wanted to continue. Keep going. I love it. How can they follow you on social media? So it's I am Vivian Green. That is Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. There's no E at the end of my name, so it's green like the color. So just I am Vivian Green. I do respond, especially on Instagram and Facebook. It is me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I probably am more more private than most artists, but uh, I do love to connect with my fans and I try to try to give of myself as much as I can when it comes to that, to connecting with them and sharing with them and responding to them and talking to them openly about music or, you know, anything. So uh, I, I really like that. I, I probably hate social media otherwise, and, and I'm only on there to connect with, with my supporters. And so I, I do do that. I make a point to do that. So if you follow me, I will probably be talking to you if you comment. <laughs> I love it. I only have a short amount of time, but I, so I thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with me for a little while. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and I can't wait to support you and talk about you and tell the world all about you. Thank you. <laughs> have a great day. You have a wonderful day. <laughs> Bye. Bye.